Hey guys, uh, Sam here. Last uh, video I showed some of the issues I had with the craters and the uh, primer that I shot. First time ever shooting um, any, anything actually through an HVLP gun, so uh, a lot to learn here. Um, let me show you what I've got going on. Now I'm sanding uh, with 180. Sam from Classic Car Overhaul um, suggested I just sand everything down with 180 and then uh, shoot another coat or two on there. Um, and some other guys had commented agreeing uh, with that. So that's what I'm doing. Um, I hand sanded with some 180 and then down in in the frame rails was very hard to get down in there I had to use this uh, red scotch bright pad so uh, that's what I've got going on um, now I'm about to mix up some primer and uh, clean the gun I, again um, this time I'm also going to use um, isopropyl alcohol to clean and then also clean with the um, SPI waterborne wax and grease remover. So last time I only used the SPI wax and grease remover. Some other mistakes um, noted from last time. I'm not sure about these stickers. Some of the places um, you could see some, I don't know if you can see that, but the stickers, some of the color had come off the sticker and run down and then it left an adhesive um, peeling them off. So this time I'm not going to use the sticker. One other mistake I made last time is I had cleaned the gun with lacquer thinner and when I, I, I flushed lacquer thinner through the gun but then when I went to use the primer I didn't spray primer through the gun before I started on the car so um, I don't know what effect that would have but I'm going to, to uh, make sure to spray some through the car this time. I'll bring you back after I get some primer on this. Our local Napa just got a paint shop uh, a few weeks ago so I've already kind of become a regular there but anyway I picked up these uh, high flow connections uh, this one has a regulator built into it that you can turn the pressure off to the coupling and then when you take the coupling off it doesn't uh, it doesn't shoot off my gun up here. Also I bought some uh, latex gloves. These have the uh, extended cuff. I had an issue. I was using the cheap latex gloves. I had got some from Lowe's. I'll show you guys those. These things uh, with lacquer thinner just eat right through them and they bust. So those seem to be working good. Also I had issues pouring last time. Uh, you can see I got it all over the place, so I got one of these things so I can transfer, I can fill this, I think it's a quart, one quart container up with the gallon there and then just keep it in here. Uh, this is what they actually use to dispense at Napa and they, he said it, it'll hold good for several months, so I'm going to give that a shot, so I'll talk to you guys in a minute. Well, that round went a lot better. This is after 30 minutes. I'm about to put another light coat on there. Uh, you can still kind of see under there uh, the craters from before. I think that's just the old, other ones that I didn't sand all the way smooth. So I don't think it did it this time after doing the sanding with the 180. So I feel a lot better about it now. So I'm about to spray uh, probably the final final coat. I went ahead and put a, a total of three coats now because I had enough um, epoxy primer. So it looks a lot better. Uh, still has some of those uh, craters, but I think most of these were the ones from before that are just underneath but I feel a lot better about it because last time in the center of the craters you could see bare metal this time everything is covered so I'm gonna go with it 
Um, another thing I'll point out, um, Eric, ASIC Eric, a ASIC Eric actually pointed it out, but um, it's supposed to have an 80 grit tooth on bare metal. Uh, I did not have that. I used a wire wheel which kind of polished the metal. Uh, the sandblasting probably would have been fine, I guess, um, but then I went over it with the wire wheel and kind of polished it. So that might have been part of the problem. So we'll find out next time I epoxy prime bare metal, I'll definitely do the 80 grit. Sprayed weld through primer on the back of this panel everywhere there's a hole. That came out pretty good. I used the 3M Weld Through Primer 2, I think is what it's called. Uh, I decided not to epoxy prime over the uh, this black coating here because most of it's going to be covered um, with this Weld Through Primer. And then once the body's on the the panels on the car, I'll be able to get to all this when I do the bottom of the car, and I'll I'll shoot it then. And then on this side, I did epoxy, not epoxy, a weld through primer on both sides where the panel is going to uh, plug weld to this. Temporarily mounted the rear seat panel using a couple of sheet metal screws. I uh, did this so I can mark uh, all the primered surfaces where the plug welds are going to be so I can remove the primer there and put the weld through down. Uh, what I used to scribe, I picked up this uh, hook and pick set, but I used this hook and just went around and scratched uh, like that. I ground off uh, the primer where the plug welds are going to go. I used a couple different methods. Um, I started off using this uh, wire brush on the Dremel and then it started wearing out so I switched over to this little flap disc 120 grit flap disc on the Dremel so worked pretty good um, I also had I tried this but I didn't like um, how much material it was removing Right here was one. But uh, anyway, I just cleaned everything with wax and grease remover. Uh, I used the SPI waterborne. And I also, before that, I cleaned it with uh, isopropyl alcohol. And I masked off where I don't want to get the weld through primer. So I'm going to be using 3M's weld through 2. So I'll bring you back after I get sprayed. All right, weld through primer is down. So uh, I think I'm gonna wrap up this video here. Hopefully this weekend, I will be starting to weld the panel in. So give me some uh, feedback. Let me know if there's anything I need to do before I weld this panel in. Uh, otherwise, I'll talk to you later.